present, to present to you today. So I'm a technical writer at Salesforce. I've been at the company for four years, and I've been in technical writing for almost my whole career for 13 years, and got into API documentation by default a couple years into that. And I think we win the award for the longest title. I apologize to the meeting organizers that we took up three lines on your event schedule. But this is a bit of a mouthful, so let me break it down for you. Um, when we're talking about a large-scale solution, Salesforce is a company of over 40,000 employees, and we have over 175 writers, and that's not including managers and some writer specialist type roles. And a writer-driven solution means that what you're seeing today and this process and solution that we're proposing and implementing at Salesforce started with our team of developer doc writers. And then REST API, so we are focused today specifically on REST API reference documentation. So that would be documentation coming out of API specs such as OpenAPI or Gradle specs. And we'll get into all of that. Um, I just want you to think, as you're watching today's presentation, I think it's kind of a given at these conferences, um, but that you think in terms of your own challenges that you're facing at work, um, and that just can make it a lot more meaningful for you. And so it, it's not so much the content we're presenting today that can be meaningful for you, but the ideas that you receive that can correlate back to your work. So maybe uh, you'll think of a colleague that you need to reach out to, or a meeting that you need to schedule, or you'll think of some way that what we share today can improve your solution. But I do hope that you enjoy looking at our solution and how we've been working to solve our problems as well. So with that, I'll hand it to Sejal, and then I'll talk to you more a little later. Hi everyone, I'm Sejal. I come all the way from India, and it's my first time at Dam. And happy to be here. I was into QA earlier. I was a software tester, I started with that, and along the way I've changed many careers. I was a technical writer at some point, writing uh, API docs as well, and then later since I'm a product owner at Salesforce, I work with automating all the doc processes and focus on dev docs. So, yeah. Um, before we go any further, you should know that Salesforce is a publicly traded company, so anything that we say in this presentation should not affect your purchasing decisions for anything related to Salesforce. <laughs> it's a legal requirement. Uh, who here knows what Salesforce is? Wow, I didn't expect that. A lot of people. Uh, so Salesforce, many of you know, is a CRM company, a customer relationship management solution. It gives you a whole new way to connect with your customers. Yeah, you can connect with your customers with, with Salesforce Customer 360 degree platform for functions like sales, marketing, and even industry functions like financials uh, and retail banking. Um, before, uh, okay. Um, and yeah, before we go any further, I want to know who here is a writer? How many writers do we have? Oh, good. And anybody product manager? Engineers? Yes, so you all know it takes a village to make API docs work and our journey, today we are going to talk about uh, more about our journey and process than the solution. Yes, we'll talk about solution which Kelsey will get into more about it, but uh, for this presentation I think that the journey uh, or process that we took to make it all happen matters more and it takes a village, like I said, uh, key players for here is writers who own the documentation, who write the documentation, but then there are a lot of people behind the scene who are working tirelessly to make it all happen and that is executives who fund and sponsor and help in other ways. There are product managers and engineers with whom writers work in Scrum team, Agile processes and who support all the doc processes uh, behind the scene. And there are architects who uh, drive the engineering best practices so that API, uh, we get good API solutions. So we work with all of these to get to our solution. And uh, Salesforce is a large company and we have lots of APIs and uh, uh, this is, uh, these are some of the numbers. Uh, Every problem is an opportunity in itself, and our opportunity here was to improve our documentation 
for the APIs as well as good, give good uh, experience for the customers. Some of the numbers you see here, uh, we have 23 different types of APIs and when I say 23 types of APIs and not really a single endpoint or services or resources. These are the types of APIs uh, based on some logical grouping, either based on some uh, framework or code base or products, acquisitions or the focus or features of the API. So on the right you see we have enterprise level test APIs. So all Salesforce is a huge platform and all the objects of this platform get exposed in different formats. One of them is REST uh, and that happens automatically. Metadata API is to access the metadata for the preferences, settings and everything. We have yeah, a lot of bulk APIs for asynchronous bulk transactions and then IoT and then we have marketing cloud or focus cloud for which are acquired company. Some ways integrated partially in Salesforce. Uh, so these are, we have tried to list some of that, they are not completely quantitative types, but there are some of them. And on the top of it, we have like more than hundreds of club team who are contributing to one, two, three, or multiple types of these APIs. So, yeah, and we have, like Kelsey said, we have more than 75 plus writers who work with these hundreds of scrum team who document whatever API their scrum teams uh, develop. That again, one writer ends up documenting more than different types of APIs, and all of these have different processes and tool chains. So it's a lot of context switching for writers. We do have some expert writers who own some of these areas who will give guidance to individual scrum writers, where it's just a lot of process to manage for writers. And uh, uh, when we acquire the company, it takes a lot of time to get them, it takes some time to get them merged in the Salesforce doc pipeline, so we end up with 10 different doc portals and 10 different doc tool chains, which sometimes one writer has to work with one, two, three, four, five tool chains. Uh, so that, this is just to show the complexity of the problem that we are dealing with. And this is one of the doc portal, developer.salesforce.com is the primary doc portal where Salesforce dev doc developers would go to access their docs. And there itself, you see, it's just one doc portal, but we have, we are showing uh, three, four doc processes for one doc portal. Some of them are where specs are written by engineers and writers are integration with examples or descriptions. And uh, that is gets pub that gets published in the body. Some of them are manually written. There are no specs. There is no code automation. So writers are actually writing it manually with the help of developers. And that's what we are calling it unstructured dot uh, docs. You and you will see the red dotted line that goes back to service. It's the broken process. So what happens is writers write their documentation and something changes in the service and it gets generated again and what changes I can make gets lost. So they have to track it outside of the code to find out what is changed and then follow some kind of diff processes and track everything manually. So that's a broken process. And we have a lot <laughs> many diff processes, not just one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to complete the puzzle, uh, we, uh, when we think of the solution, we need to have a lot, uh, for, um, a lot of other factors to consider. Salesforce documentation, uh, developer docs, reference docs are versioned. Uh, customers expect to go uh, to have access to the older versions of the doc all the way to years, years ago, ago. So we need to maintain all versions. And additionally, uh, some of the acquisitions have different versioning strategy. So we need to have different versioning strategy for products sometimes. Our docs currently are localized. So the solution that we had to come up with had to work with the existing localization process and we had to ensure it doesn't break it. At the same time, uh, we also want to keep the cost down for the localization. The release schedule, again, uh, some of the products have different release schedules, so we had to abide by the dog processes have to follow the product publishing related schedule so that had to be considered. Why it makes sense for uh, you know small scale project where having access for writers to the code base so that writers can go and you know change comments and annotate that uh, 
to join with the documentation. We found it, uh, it doesn't work if we want to scale it uh, for more than 200 writers. So the issues there are that not all the teams and all the engineering teams and all the writers are often going to do the code and change it. And uh, at the same time, the code base is quite large and being contributed by multiple Scrum teams. So it's not really easy to manage. So we could not go that way also. At the same time, we wanted to make a solution specs agnostic. We didn't want to enforce any kind of one spec for all the teams to work with because we are working with hundreds of some teams. So we wanted to give them the choice. So we, are, we have kept it open for any specs. Teams can choose to work with OpenAPI 2, 3 or Lambda specs and that should work with us. Yeah, so our end goal was to keep everyone happy as much as possible. Uh, we wanted we want a unified automated pipeline for engineers so that we want to be able to tell the teams uh, or engineers that, okay, if you have the specs ready, just give it to us and we'll take it from there. And they're happy. Uh, and we want writers to be happy. Uh, we don't want them to be dealing with overly technical tooling and uh, uh, processes, so we wanted to simplify to chain for writers. And we want our customers to have amazing, modern, interactive dog portals. So that is the process. I would let Kelsey take over and tell me more about the actual journey that she took. So this is a high-level view of our journey. It's it looks linear and kind of cute right here. It's not always that linear in practice. Um, but I'll just go through these in high level and then we'll dig into steps two, three, and four in more detail on the next slides. So the green light, that just means that, um, I, so I used to be an API, a REST API writer for one of those um, APIs that Sagel showed on an earlier slide. And the problem we're presenting here was my day-to-day -day problem as it was for many other writers. And so um, I switched um, teams and started reporting into the core platform developer doc writer team, which finally gave me access to the right kind of the right management chain and into our doc ops operation to be able to not just be this person over here saying, "Hey, what about me? This really stinks for me," um, but to be able to affect change a little bit more productively. And so my manager, I worked with her, and we formed a group of similarly passionate. API doc writers, and and we kind of took it from there. So it's very much a grassroots effort. We're all volunteers. I think we all know what that means at work, where it's not part of your official allocation, but it's something you really enjoy doing. And so everything related to this presentation isn't my normal day-to-day -day job, but over the last few months and year, it certainly has taken a lot of the time. So I'll jump into these other steps um, further on here. So Lake work. There's a couple things I want to talk to on this slide, and don't let the screenshots distract you too much or try to read anything on there. Um, this represents the work that that core team of writers did. So when we first started out, you know, we didn't really have any funding to solve this. We didn't have all the buy-in from different departments, and, and we knew we couldn't just wait on engineering resources. A few of the writers on the team were technical enough to be able to do some lightweight solutions, but really we needed we needed more support. So we thought, well, what are the things that we can do um, to move this forward while we're working to get support and buy-in from the other groups? And so we did a lot of background research. Those numbers that you saw in the earlier slides came out of the work that our team did. We cataloged all the APIs across Salesforce just to make sure we understood what the problem actually was that we're trying to solve and we weren't just making assumptions. Um, this shows here we we drew up examples. So for writers who were working with open API specs at the time, we wanted to just enable them as much as we could. And so we essentially created our own style guide that was on top of the standards that are available from the open API community. And we fully annotated an open API spec for writers who maybe have worked in JSON before or were familiar with that, just to help people who were maybe feeling some of that pain in the meantime to move things forward. And, and then we, um, put together an example of an API spec that mapped back to our style guide so that it, it just kind of gave writers and engineers the full picture of what they were building. That team also started training other writers. We started office hours. We put together our internal process documentation. 
And then started gathering requirements. It was just kind of a natural thing that came out of our meetings and discussions as we would say, oh, we need this, oh, we need this. And so we started capturing those a little bit more form formally. So I like the term friends of the docs, and I actually learned that term from API docs in Portland last year. I, I wasn't there, but one of my colleagues was, and she came back and talked about this presentation of friends of the docs. So these are the people across your organization who, it, it's basically everyone here who isn't a writer. You are all friends of the docs. It's people who understand the importance of documentation and are willing, not just willing to help, but you know want to be partners with you in these solutions. And so. Um, we, we kind of worked laterally and, and vertically. So laterally, finding you know, the other engineers who would come forward and say, hey, my team's generating API specs. Can we get this documented? And we'd say, hey, do you want to partner with us? And kind of get them on board into helping us um, come up with a solution. So you can see all those different teams of product engineers. Um, we went to the team who's kind of centrally responsible for API governance and strategy at Salesforce. and. And I started sitting in on those meetings, as, and they haven't really had writer representation up until that point. And that was a great way to get the attention and, and help from a lot of our architects across the company. Um, doc ops. So we do have, our team of writers is large enough that we have a fully funded and operational engineering team just to support our writer tool chain. And we definitely needed their buy-in and, um, and needed help from them in making sure that the solution we were putting together would work. Developer marketing, a lot of the presentations we've heard today are from developer marketers. So I think we all know the importance of developer marketing and the solution. And then finally executives. And that came you know, both through the executives, through the uh, writers department, and then as we you know, made these friends in other areas, we would kind of work our way up there too, and then get all of the executives across these different areas aligned and uh, making sure that we had a you know, similar story that we were telling over and over and that people were on the same page. So putting this all into action, we um, say Joel was a writer and then she got hired full time as a product owner. So we finally had an official product owner for our developer doc automation. That was a huge win and step forward. And so those high level requirements that we'd started gathering, um, Sagel started taking and putting them into our technical proposal, which we'll show you a diagram of that in a minute, um, and then also turning them into formal user stories and then getting those onto the right backlog. So some of those user stories are on the DocOps backlog, some of them are on engineering, and some are on developer marketing who's delivering the portal to our customers. So some of the challenges that, you know, I've talked about some of these already, but um, corralling technical proposals. So at a company as large as Salesforce, we're not the only ones who are trying to solve this problem. There are lots of people and teams trying to work on improving processes, and, and so very often, you know, we'll hear about another team who has a similar proposal, and, and so it's really important that we would go and try to partner with those teams and, and bring them in so that you know, they didn't feel like, oh great, we're working on the same thing. And I'm sure even as I speak, there are more teams trying to solve this that we haven't yet identified or found. But it's been an obstacle, but it's also created the opportunity to have more friends of the docs and more engagement in this conversation. <coughs> Aligning stakeholders. So that's really um, come from the executive side, and that's actually been really fun. We're headed right into budget season at Salesforce, and so I've kind of taken our role of technical program manager and facilitating meetings between the different executives to share our story and um, get alignment from them and they really appreciated that that effort and it's been exciting to see how excited they are because instead of going into budget season sometimes departments can have these like competing asks it's much more clear now that this is this is a partnership and that we've done our research and that everyone is um, required for the solution to be successful and securing funding. We're, we're still waiting. It's still to be determined what funding we have for this, so it's very much in progress right now, but positive vibes, please. Um, and then finally, tracking down answers sometimes. We hit roadblocks, I mean, all the time, or there's things that we don't know the answer to, or maybe we, you know, come up against a wall or feel like, you know, we're being told no, but we want to keep moving forward anyway. And so 
that's been a challenge and an opportunity. So remember this diagram from before, which we hope not to show you again. But um, this is what we're proposing, and I'm going to break this down for you a little bit. We've kept it really simple so that um, people can understand it at multiple levels. But this is a solution for code-first API spec solutions. So if you're familiar with OpenAPI, the, the ideal um, development model is for teams to be engineering in a spec-first world where they design the API using an open API spec and then use that to build their code base. In that case, it's the, the writer process is very simple because the writer can just contribute to the API spec and then that's what's used to publish the documentation and that becomes the source of truth for the code as well. But all of those APIs we showed you earlier are already existing APIs. They may at some point make a switch or convert to a spec first development model, but probably not anytime soon. So this solution is for existing APIs that are already out there. So the, um, up at the top is the service layer where the engineering team generates this API spec. And that's really all they have to do. They generate the spec and we, when I say we, I mean documentation, tells them here's the repository where that needs to go and that's kind of the end of all that the engineers have to do. So that makes them very happy. And then um, what is in the middle is a repository owned and operated by the doc ops team. And so when, those, when a new API spec is added to that repository, um, there's a parsing tool that pulls the description fields out of the API spec and puts them into a separate doc file. And the reason for having the documentation separate and not having the writers just editing directly in open API files because um, first, it solves that problem we showed you earlier of, of documentation essentially being wiped out each time a new version is generated, because if we're wanting the spec to come from the code, and there's comments in the code that generate the first version of that documentation, you know, how are we going to reconcile those differences? We either have to build a really complex diff management process, and then, you know, people have to, like, do merges, or there has to be some kind of manual copy back. And so by pulling it out, it's, it's the way that a lot of um, engineers handle UI text. Um, they have the UI text pulled out into separate files in the code, and that allows for localization, which is the next huge benefit of having the documentation stored separately is localization, because then um, it keeps our, we can just hand those doc files to the localization team, and they translate that. And then those two dotted lines converge, and the the documentation files merged back in with the open API spec and essentially everything from the doc file wins in a merge resolution scenario and, and now we have API specs with the fully featured and edited documentation that gets pushed out to our developer community. Um, the notifications piece <coughs> is um, allowing writers to know what has changed related to doc. So, if it's a new API, that file is completely created new the first time. If it's updates to the API, um, the doc file is updated with, like the new fields are inserted with an indication to the writer, like, you know, basically an empty description or like new in brackets, like this is something you need to draw your attention to. And that process also um, automatically creates the doc, or the like work ticket for the writer in our, like, uh, ticket tracking system. Is that covered? Okay. So I want to just share, I mean, we're really excited about that solution and we've just been showing that diagram all over the place and advocating for it and explaining this to people over and over um, to get people on board and it's gone through multiple, multiple versions. It looks very simple and seems very clean, but we've had a lot of help to come to that um, from different people who have different experience with this. And these are some of our other wins that I've touched on a little bit, but um, documentation, we really have been elevated in terms of being pulled into conversations and being part of technical solutions, not just related to the documentation itself, but to, um, to how we deliver that to our customers and how we generate it. And through our Friends of the Docs, we formed a lot of great partnerships that are so valuable for working in any organization and on 
and, and thinking to the future of future projects and times where we need to lean on our coworkers for other solutions. Um, we've become experts on API docs. We've learned a lot along the way, and that core group of writers who started out working on this are now the writers who are staffing our office hours and are training up other writers and that we can all lean on for um, help for the rest of our doc team. And then finally, we wanted a plug-and-play solution that's future-proof. I think Aaron talked about that really nicely in his presentation this morning of making sure that this is something that, you know, doc portals come and go and get redesigned and change. And by, by using OpenAPI and using a, you know, an industry standard spec, we're able to have a solution that can, can move and can um, go forward. So with that, thank you very much.